Okay, first one. What I want you to do is write um, y equals 4x minus 8, and I want you to find the x and y intercepts any way you can. Ready? Go. Okay, what form is y equals 4x minus 8 in? The forms we learn in this chapter, what form is it in? Slope-intercept Slope intercept form. So we already know which intercept. The y-intercept. What's the y-intercept of y equals 4x minus 8? Negative 8. Okay, so we're already halfway there. Now, we have to recall how to find the x-intercept. What do you think? Um, Kobe. <laughs> how do we find the x-intercept? There's a little trick. Everywhere a line hits the x-axis, something equals 0. Brayden. Uh, I don't add it. Nope, not yet. Oh. Every time something hits the x-axis, Caroline, what? Change the, y to a zero. Change the y to a zero. Okay, every time it hits the x-axis, y is going to be zero. Now you solve for x. So I add 8 to both sides. And I get 4x equals 8. One more step, my x-intercept is 2. Now, what's another way you could have done that? Graphed it. Graphed it. Graph y equals 4x minus 8. Okay, go to minus 8 where the slope is, go or where the y-intercept is, go up 4 over 1, and keep going until it hits the x-axis. x-intercept, y-intercept. Okay? Now, second group. Okay, second group is arithmetic sequences. Okay, this is the formula for finding the nth term. If I wanted to find the 50th term, the 46th term. But I don't want you to find that. I just want you to find the equation at the end. So substitute in your A1, substitute in your distance, and see what you come up with. All right, Scott, here we go. What you got? Uh, no. Okay, let's start with the A1. What do we got? 7 plus... N minus 1 times what? 4. Okay, there's our first step. Not 7N. You said 7N. It should just be 7. Okay, now what do I do with that 4? Yes, sir? Distributed property. So I've got 7 plus 4n minus 4. And now one more step. Uh, one more step, one more step. Emma. Okay, combine the like terms. So 7 minus 4 is 3. So that's going to give me a final equation of 4n minus 3. If you had negative 3 plus 4n, that's the exact same thing. Okay, so leave it that order. It doesn't matter. Huh? It'd be negative 3 plus 4 in. Did I say minus 4 in? No. It's positive. It is positive. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There we go. So if you had 3 plus 4 in, that would be the same thing. 4 in plus 3, 3 plus 4 in is the same thing. Yep. Combine like terms. 7 minus 4. Okay. Okay, number 3, Caleb. That take me one more step back. Okay, make sure that your difference is four there. I'm going from negative 12 to negative eight, which means I'm increasing four. I'm going from negative eight to negative four, increasing four. Negative four to zero, increasing four. Okay, so next step, keep going, Caleb, finish it off. Okay, so 4 times n minus 1 is what? 4n minus 4. Combine the like terms. What's the last, what's the final answer? Negative 16 plus 4n. I'm going to write it 4n minus 16. Again, the way he read it, negative 16 plus 4n is the exact same thing. Okay, just depending on what order you put it in.
Okay, four and five, standard form. Taylor Peace, what is standard form? At Caroline. Shh. Nope. Nope. Don't look. Okay, AX plus BY equals C. Okay, so put number four and number five in that form. Okay, if you have to put it in standard form, AX plus BY equals C, is it anywhere near standard form right now? No. What do I have to do first? No, distributive property. Okay, shh. So distributed property is going to give me y minus 4 equals 2x minus 6. Now we're closer. We need y's and x's on both sides. There are two ways to do this. I'm going to go through both so you guys can put your hands down. All right. Both of them are right. If you don't go the way I go, wait till the end, and I'll tell you what your answer is and whether it's right or wrong. Okay. What I would do is because in the form x is first, I would leave X wherever it is, and I would move the Y to the X. Again, that's my personal opinion. If you went the other way, that's okay. Relax. Just bear with me for a minute. So I'm going to subtract Y. Because I've moved them all the way over here, I'm going to move the 6 back here because it gets it on the other side. This cancels. This cancels. That leaves me with 2X minus Y equals a positive 2. If you went the other direction, yours will be negative 2x plus y equals negative 2. It's the exact same line. I could take 10 minutes and prove it to you. You're just going to have to trust me. Either one of those answers would be fine. Again, either 2x minus y equals 2 or negative 2x plus y equals negative 2. Those are the only two correct answers. Okay. Okay, number five. Same thing, distributed property first. I've got y plus six. What's one third times x? Anybody? One third x. One third x. Okay. Now, when I take one third times negative nine, I know my answer is going to be negative. Okay, Luke, what's one third times nine? Three. Okay, so that makes it negative three. Shh. Don't act surprised. He knows the answer. Okay? What's nine divided by three? Three. Three. So one third of nine is three. That's how you know it. Ah. Well, that's not working for you. Try something different. Try my method. You looked at him and said, how did you get that? I'm telling you how he got it right away. Okay, anyways, now I'm going to leave my x, and I'm going to take my y to it. So I'm going to subtract y. Yep, I'm leaving my x because I want it to be first. Okay, if I'm taking my x's and y's over there, that means I'm going to add 3. So that gives me 1 third x minus y equals 9. If you did it the other way, you would have negative one-third x plus y equals negative nine. Can you it around? Now, shh, okay. Okay, now, problem, okay. Ax plus by equals c cannot have fractions in it. Okay? I missed this in the lesson. I completely forgot. And it's my bad, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix. Okay? All right. AX plus BY, A, B, and C have to be integers. Okay? And no fractions. All right? So they have to be positive or negative whole numbers. Okay? To do that, how can I change one-third into a positive or negative number? Ashlyn. By its reciprocal. In this case, I'm just going to multiply by the denominator, which is what? Three. three. 
So I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 3. So what's 3 times 1 third? What's 3 times 1 third? 1. What's 3 times negative y? Negative 3y. And 3 times 9 is going to give me 27. Okay, here are the fourth. Shh, here are the fourth and fifth e important equations. Okay, we've already done nth term. We've done standard form. Now we're going to do point slope, and also using the slope formula. Okay, so the four formulas we've done so far: nth term, standard form, point slope, and slope. Okay, there are two up here. All right, take five negative two with the slope of 4, substitute it into the point slope form, and get an answer. Now, number 7, they've given you a point, but you have to find the slope. So use the slope formula, or graph it, and do rise over run, doesn't matter, okay, and then put it in point slope form. Okay, shh. Point slope form, all we have to do is substitute. Remember, there are two things in point slope form that we never substitute anything for. What are they, Lauren? Y and X. Not Y1, not X1, but Y and X will always stay the same. Shh, here we go. What's Y? Y, okay. Shh, what is Y1? Two. Negative two. Negative, don't yell at me. Shh. that I ask. Hey, what's the y1 value? Negative 2. So when I subtract a negative 2, what does that mean? Positive. So I add 2 equals m, which is 4, times x. And what's x1? 5. So I put minus 5. Again, I've just substituted into the point slope form, and I am done. Point slope form ends there. No, it ends there. We're done. We're done. Okay. Now, on number seven. Shh. Now we have to find the slope first. Okay. So what is y2? Negative two. What is y1? Okay. Plus four. All over 6, minus 0, shh, over. Okay, hmm? so negative 2 plus 4 is how much? Two. Positive 2. Over 6, which is what? Okay, so what? <clears throat> what's y? Y. What's y1? We're going to use the first point. Plus 4. Because it's minus a minus. What's the slope? One third. One third. What are we doing? What's x? x? And what's x1? Uh, plus two. Oh, plus okay, so the answer is y plus 4 equals 1 third parenthesis x minus 0. Okay, now 8 and 9. Now we're to our fifth formula. Okay? Our fifth formula is the slope-intercept form, and that's y equals mx plus b, where m is the what? Slope, slope and b is the y-intercept. Okay, so take number 8, and we have two points, 2, 4, and 4, negative 6, and I want you to put it in y equals mx plus b form. Don't do number 9 for now. Just take a look at number 8. Okay, there are two methods here, all right? First, we can find the slope, which is what I'm going to do, and then use it to find the y-intercept. Or you could take those two points and graph them. Okay, Take the two points, extend your line, find out what your y-intercept is, where does it hit the y-axis, and then do your rise over run to find your slope. Okay, What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slope. So I'm going to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What's y2? What's y2? It's negative 6 minus 4. What's x2? 4. 4. 
and then minus 2. So what's negative 6 minus 4? Negative 10. Negative 10. And what's 4 minus 2? 2. Giving me a slope of? Negative 5. I now have a slope. I have points. What form can I use? It was on the screen before. Point slope. I have a point. I have a slope. Put it in point slope form. Now, you might ask, well, which one of those points do I use? Doesn't matter. Use either one. I would use the 2, 4 because it's all positive. Okay? So let's go through and use point slope form. What is y? Y, y is still y. What is y1? It's 4, so it's going to be minus 4. What's the slope? Negative 5. What's x? X. And then what's x1? Minus 2. Okay, now, if we want this in slope-intercept form, what has to be by itself? The y. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our distributive property. That's going to give us negative 5x plus 10. And if I want to get y by itself, i got one more step. What do I do? Minus 4 on both sides. How about we add 4 to both sides because that's a minus 4. But that's not what you said. Be very careful tomorrow. And so that gives me y equals... Negative 5x plus 14. So you find you find a slope, you put it in point slope form, and then you solve for y. All right, number nine. This is something that I didn't cover again, but this is going to be very simple when you think about it. Tell me something or some characteristics of parallel lines what that has to do with slope, anything like that. Brayden. They're not mostly going to have. They're going to have the exact same. Space. Are you pointing at me again? They're going to have the same what? Slopes. We're doing slope this entire chapter. Parallel lines have the exact same slope. So if I want a line that goes through 3, 6, and I want it parallel to that line, what's its slope going to be? Two. This line has a slope of 2. If this line is parallel to it, it also has a slope of 2. So now I have a point and a slope. How do I put it in y equals mx plus b form? How do I do it? Point slope form and solve for y. Okay, give me the first line. What do we got? Perfect. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Now, remember the rules. If you have the exact same thing on both sides, they just cancel each other. If you added 6 to both sides, you just got plus 0. And just cross out the plus 0. It's y equals 2x. Again, the only time you should keep that 0 is if it's inside a parentheses for point slope form. Okay. Now we have perpendicular lines. Okay. Parallel lines never touch. Perpendicular lines intersect and they form a what? Angle. What kind? 90 degree angle. Shh. Okay. So if they intersect and form a 90 degree angle, here's what happens. Their slopes are negative reciprocals. Okay. Their slopes are negative reciprocals. So if I want to graph a line that's perpendicular to that one, I need to take its reciprocal and I need to change the sign and I need to flip it. So if I change the sign, that now becomes positive one-fourth, and I flip it. So what's the slope of my new line? Four. Again, let me rewind. Negative reciprocal. So change the sign to one-fourth, 
and flip it to four. Now, huh, I got a point. I got a slope. See where I'm going here? How would we do eight and nine? Point slope form, and we solved for y. Okay. So let, let's go ahead and work this one. Um, oh, who can I now? I've already drew. Here we go. Sure you do. What's y? No. What's y? What's y? <laughs> What's y one? Four. What's the slope? What's the slope? No, it's right here. I already got it. Four. Yeah. What's X? What's X one? Two. Okay. Now finish it off. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, 4x minus 4. All right. Shh. Yep. Okay, the last three problems today will be graphs. All right, so take out your sheet of graph paper. The first one, we're going to go with 2x minus 4y. 2x minus 4y equals negative 8. Now, I'm going to do these all in, in y equals mx plus b form because that's the form I feel most comfortable with graphing. I think it's the simple all the way around. It's not the easiest on all of them, but it's the easiest all the way around. So I'm going to manipulate this to get y by itself. So what do I do first? Caleb, Minus 2x. subtract 2x from both sides. So that's going to give me negative 4y equals negative 2x minus 8. Now, to get rid of the negative 4y, or negative 4 in front of the y, what do I do? Divide, Divide both sides by negative 4. Now, here's where you need to remember your fraction rules. Okay, what is negative 2 divided by negative 4? One half. One half. Okay, so what's negative 2x divided by negative 4? One half x. Okay, so this is y equals... 1 half x, and then what's negative 8 divided by negative 4? Negative two. Positive 2. Okay, negative 8 divided by negative 4 is a positive 2. So I've just found the slope and the y-intercept. My y-intercept is 2, so I go up here at 2, and my slope is 1 half, which means I go up 1 and to the right 2. Up 1 and to the right too. Then I draw my line correctly and a straight edge. And correctly, I mean make sure there are arrows. It's a line, not a line segment. Be very careful. OK, y equals negative 6x is in y equals mx plus b form already, but it's missing a b. So what number can you add to this equation that doesn't change its value? No. Zero. Zero. One is a multiplicative identity. Zero is an additive identity. Okay. So that tells me my y-intercept is where? Zero. At zero. All right. So here's my y-intercept. Now, my rise and run is what value? Negative, Negative six. So I'm going to fall six. And I'm going to go to the right one. Oh, to the right? Why the right? Because it's rise over run. Okay, now that I'm out of room on my graph, I can go the other direction, up six, and to the left one. Because positive six over negative one is the exact same thing. Okay, so now I draw my line again correctly. That's not a good one. That one's not bad. Draw arrows on the end. Okay. And I am done with that. 
Okay, so if I'm going to put it in y equals mx plus b form, what do I have to do with the x? Anybody? Subtract, subtract it. Okay, subtract x from both sides. So that's going to give me y equals negative x minus 2. So what is my y-intercept, Lauren? What's my y-intercept? It's 1. What's my y-intercept? Oh, negative 2. Negative 2. Hold on. Now, my slope is the number that's in front of the x. What is my slope? Brooke, what's my slope? What's the number in front of the x? Even though it's not there, but it's got a negative sign, so it's negative 1. All right, so my slope is negative 1, which means I fall 1 and run 1. Fall 1 and run 1. Okay, so that's the graph of x plus y equals negative 2.